We had a healthy response to our recent video on our experiments with Dolby Atmos in the comments section, both positive and negative and lost a few subscribers because of it. So sorry about that. Goodbye to you. And whilst we don't want to turn this into the Dolby Atmos supporters fan club channel and have more regular content in the production pipeline, we have been made aware of a very important development in the past couple of days for Mac users in particular. One of the biggest criticisms from those already working in the format is that if you've invested however many thousands in a multi-channel speaker system, in order to listen to commercial music mixes in Atmos on that system, you need to spend thousands more on a consumer multi-channel decoder and then find a way to patch the outputs of that into your system. And many are using the JBL SDP55 as it has a Dante output, so saves repatching if you're using a system that supports Dante. But that's another five grand. But if you're on a Mac, there's now an easy way that doesn't involve spending any money at all and uses your existing interface to pipe multi-channel audio directly from Apple Music or the Apple TV app into your speakers. Thank you to Beck is a God on our Discord server who pointed us towards a blog post from Pro Tools Expert by David Stuggle, who accidentally found a new feature in macOS Monterey that means you no longer need a costly AV receiver. So thank you to both of you for sharing that information. Here's how it works. Open the Apple Music app and go to Preferences. In the Playback tab, set Dolby Atmos to Automatic. We found that setting it to always on results in it being always off, for us at least. Now you need to configure your audio output device, your interface. So open Audio MIDI Setup in the Utilities folder, select your interface and then click the Configure Speakers button. Click on the menu for configuration and select 714 Atmos Surround in the Atmos section of the menu or the closest setting to match the setup you have. You can then select the correct outputs of your interface according to how your speakers are plugged in, and you can even click on the speaker icon to send a brief test tone to that output to make sure you're configuring the right speaker. And that's it. You can now listen to commercial Atmos mixes on your speaker system with a few caveats. If you're running any number of speaker channels above 7.1.4, then you're a bit stuffed. So if you're running 916, for example, then you'll lose the front wide channels and the middle height ones. And Apple Music is buggier than a bug in a buggy going to a bug convention in Bulgaria at the moment. If we switch Dolby Atmos to always on in preferences in Apple Music, then it's always off. And if you select one of the spatial playlists that Apple recommend to start exploring, then you only get the stereo mix. So you have to click on the actual track and then play it from the artist or album page then it works. The latest incarnation of Apple Music certainly isn't the software team's finest hour, but we're sure it will improve over time. And if it saves 5,000 quid, then for the moment at least, we can put up with the minor annoyances. We've spent a good couple of days checking out some Atmos mixes in pretty much every genre we can think of. And so here are some of our highlights and some recommended listening. Elton John, Rocket Man. The first pop rock song to be mixed in Dolby Atmos was Elton John's Rocket Man, mixed by Greg Penny a whopping eight years ago at the very start of Dolby Atmos for Music's journey. It's one of the finest Atmos mixes out there today. The first thing everyone listens to in Atmos is Rocket Man and for good reason. The Atmos mix suits the song perfectly and really enhances it, and the song could indeed have been written for the format all those years ago. Maybe Elton could see into the future. Who knows? It all starts off very stereo and then the backing vocals beginning ooing from the sides and those slide guitars come in and that is the wow moment. Hans Zimmer, Dune, Dream of Arrakis. The opening song of the 2021 Dune soundtrack immediately showcases the high dynamic range of Dolby Atmos mixing from the beginning. Being written for cinema, the quiet, textured intro is immediately shattered by earth-shaking drums with excellent transients and a low end that really does shake the room, followed by a tension-building sequence which slowly increases in tempo until the climax of the song, along with choral chants that accompany a swirling synth or two in the surround channels. Finally, a dissonant female choir brings in a common theme throughout the Dune soundtrack, with many of the aforementioned textures and sounds being repeatedly used in different variations and sequences throughout the album, with many of these features being pushed into the surround channels to raise the hairs on your neck every single time. Lude Down Under. 
Moving on to a 2022 drum and bass remake of the well-known Men at Work tune, Down Under, there are some fantastic mix choices that have been showcased in this Atmos mix. Firstly, the saw synths in the chorus sound absolutely massive. They sound pretty huge and wide in the original stereo mix, but the Atmos version takes this to a whole new level by keeping the synths not only in the front left and right channels, but extending them out to the wider side channels. To add to this, the flute melody present in the chorus is played by a real flautist, no MIDI here, and it sounds great in the mix coming from the side speakers only, meaning the front left and right speakers have no competing elements in the mix to enable them to deliver their full dynamic range for the drum and bass chorus with just the saw synth and percussion in the front left and right. Sukrinder Singh, Holly Holly. As you know, Mark is a mastering engineer and he's always going on about how some of the best recorded and highest production quality music he receives is from India, Africa and the Far East. So we dived into the Bollywood and African playlists as suggested by Apple Music and surely enough there are a plethora of gems to be found. But one of our favourites is Holly Holly by Sukhvinder Singh which makes great use of the surround channels available, putting the bass in the centre channel, the vocals and main percussive elements in the main left and right channels and pushing all the backing vocals and auxiliary instrumentation from strings through to more native Indian instrumentation out to the sides and rear channels and this gives us a really great and full sounding mix with some pretty impressive transient action coming from the front left and the front right channels taking great advantage of the headroom provided by isolating elements on their own individual speakers. Tiger and Doja Cat, Freaky Deaky. <laughs> Tigers. Meow. In terms of songwriting, this is a fairly music by numbers, pop, rap, hip hop tune, but the mix of the song provides good dynamics on the percussion, as well as a deep and powerful bass end, which sounds great if you've got subs tied into your main left and main right speakers. On the surround channels, we find mainly a quiet guitar line with delays and reverbs from the main left and right mix, along with the occasional ad-lib vocal on the side channels. This is quite common within pop Atmos mixes. The reverbs tend to create the immersive sound whilst leaving the main elements to the front left, center and right speakers. Hans Zimmer, Time, Alan Walker Remix. The Alan Walker remix of Hans Zimmer's Time track from Inception mixes both the dance elements with typical Hans Zimmer build-up style elements found in his soundtracks. Blaring horns, strings and textured synths fill the surround channels giving a hugely wide sound, but in the dance section in the final act of the song, the mix almost entirely collapses down to stereo with the occasional synth hit in the wide speakers, although with what sounds like a noise gate on them giving a jarring cut at the end of each hit. Sigala, Stay the Night. This feel-good dance tune from Sigala has a pretty standard mix configuration in the front left and right speakers, but elements of percussion fill the side speakers as well as reverby backing vocals, giving a really wide mix that's quite pleasant to listen to. This is just great. Olivia Rodrigo, Driver's License. This is a great pop song and it's perfect for Atmos. The really convincing Phantom Center vocal separates itself from the really wide instrumentation, with most of that coming from the side speakers with a touch of piano in the front left and right. A rhythmic clapping throughout the verses also adds a nice touch of interest in the sides, slowly merging into the front left and right channels throughout the song to add width and depth. The backing vocals are almost all in the sides and rear channels, giving a truly immersive feeling that works perfectly for the sparse, yet somehow all-encompassing sound. But one of the criticisms of many of you has been that you don't always want accordions flying around your head, and we'd agree. So I've been listening to Atmos mixes that just give you a sense of space, put you in the room. And a fine choice to start with is Steve Jenowick's Atmos mix of the Miles Davis Kind of Blue album. This saw the original three track recording being reamped in the live room at Capitol in LA and is the finest mix of this record I've ever heard. It just gives you an enhanced sense of space whilst remaining faithful to and enhancing the original mix. A perfect example of how Atmos can be used very tastefully on a classic album. Equally as engaging was the 1965 Getz Gilberto album from Stan Getz and Jao Gilberto. It's very much a band at the front scenario again, but as with Kind of Blue, it puts you in an incredible space which really enhances the depth of the recording. You can hear exactly where the performers are in the room here, and the delicate drums and guitar are just joyous to get lost in. 
But number one for me has been the soundtrack to The Rise of Skywalker, conducted by John Williams. I think Williams is a genius, and the orchestra here, consisting of 105 freelance musicians backed up by a 100-piece choir, is thrilling. The recording is one of the finest I've ever heard, and again, the orchestra and choir are very much in the front. It's recorded and mixed from the conductor's perspective, John Williams himself, and his scoring and orchestration is really emphasised and enhanced by the incredible recording and the perfect mix. The dynamic range is insane and you'll find yourself moved to tears by the delicate soft passages one minute, captivated by the intakes of breath clearly audible by the choir the next, and then just thrilled when the whole orchestra comes in for the classic themes we all know and love. An incredible piece of music composed and conducted by the world's finest and captured perfectly. This is what recorded music is about for me and it's enhanced beautifully by the Atmos version here. In fact, I can't wait to finish this video, turn all the lights off, crank up the ATCs and go and listen to it all again. Atmos doubters, you need to hear this on a full range system cranked up. It will change your mind. If you'd like to hear these songs for yourself, a link to each of the songs is in the description down below. I highly recommend checking them all out and please let us know what you think of the Atmos mix of these songs in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, create, don't hate, and you'll see us in the next one.